Hello. This is the 11th in the series, A History of Jazz. This one devoted to ragtime and revival. Not the revival of the 70s, as we all know, but the first revival in the 40s and 50s. Lou Waters was undoubtedly the key figure in the worldwide jazz revival which began in the early 40s. As leader, cornetist, composer, and moving force of the great Yerba Buena jazz band, he played a major role in influencing the development of the revival and the creation of what was to be known as the San Francisco style. His pianist was Wally Rose. And from the first recording session of the Yerba Buena on December 19, 1941, let's hear Wally with the band playing Scott Joplin's Maple Leaf Rag. <laughs> Sensational. Lou Waters, Yerba Buena Jazz Band, consisting of Lou and Bob Scobie on cornets, Turk Murphy on trombone, Ellis Horn clarinet, Wally Rose on piano, Clancy Hayes and Russ Bennett banjos, Squire Gersbach tuba, and Bill Dart drums. That December 19, 1941 session was a landmark in traditional jazz because this was their first recordings and they have been such an influence that approximately 90% of all traditional jazz bands today try to imitate the sound of Lou Waters' Yerba Buena jazz band. For the ragtime revival in the 40s and 50s, it is therefore most appropriate that we feature the Yerba Buena since they were the first to start not only traditional jazz once again in the midst of the big band era, but through Wally Rose, the pianist, they featured ragtime. And this is how they did it. Taking a tune, for instance, an old popular rag that we had surveyed earlier in the series, 
Henry Lodge's temptation rag, for instance, and putting Wally as a solo pianist with the rhythm section of the Yerba Buena, it would sound something like this. as a soloist accompanied by the rhythm section of the Yerba Buena Jazz Band. The next in the revival of the 40s was a young man, was a young man. I always tend to think of them as still young men, but Ralph Sutton was born in 1922 in Missouri, and he was a unique fellow because while he was growing up in the 30s, and early 40s, his idol was Fats Waller. And what was unusual about that was that you wouldn't have thought that the New York stride East Coast pianist, Fats Waller, would be the idol of a Missourian. In any event, Ralph Sutton came to New York in the late 40s, where he started to dazzle everybody with his unique style. His performance was what counted. It was fresh and original. And he started developing a fresh and original repertoire. For the first time since it was written in 1908, Gene Schwartz's rag, The Whitewash Man, was recorded in 1949 by Ralph Sutton. <laughs> Thank you. 
and that was Ralph Sutton's particular brand of ragtime magic, doing Gene Schwartz's little-known whitewash man. To show you the extent of his abilities, Ralph Sutton's, that is, he came off in the 60s with a particularly pleasing tune which was surprisingly little known. It was written by Bob Zerke and Matty Matla, and it's called The Eye Opener. A 1939 rag has played for us now by Ralph Sutton. as performed by Ralph Sutton. And finally, to show the versatility of the man, if such is needed, as well as the extent of the different kinds of rags that were being considered, Fats's first, uh, uh, rather Ralph's first love, Fats Waller, with his lovely composition called Alligator Crawl. <laughs> Thank you. 
Ralph Sutton doing Fats Waller's alligator crawl. Does it strike you that so far we've heard two pianists from the early 40s and 50s revival of ragtime, and both of them had been jazz pianists? Wally Rose, the pianist with the Yerba Buena jazz band, and Ralph Sutton as a solo jazz pianist. We're coming to another solo jazz pianist who happens to have an extraordinary way with rags. It's Baltimore-born Don Ewell, who was born November 14, 1916, and his approach was quite different. As Ralph Sutton was very much taken with Fats Waller and his ideas, so Don was taken very much with Jelly Roll Morton. But that wasn't exclusively Don's area, as he too went in for the stride effects of James P. Johnson, who after all taught Fats Waller. And so let's hear a very interesting combination that Don put together just a couple of years ago because essentially they're all the same tune. One, the first tune he does is Buddy's Habits, which of course King Oliver's Creole Jazz Band recorded, and then James P. Johnson's Carolina Shout, followed by Joe Sullivan's Little Rock Getaway. Essentially the same tune. Let's hear the medley now that Don Ewell will play of Buddy's Habits, Carolina Shout, and Little Rock Getaway.
Don Ewell in 1970 doing a trilogy of the same essential tune, Buddy's Habits, Carolina Shout, and Little Rock Getaway. In 1957, he went back to his first love, Jelly Roll Morton, when he recorded a very little-known Jelly tune called Chicago Breakdown. <laughs> Don Ewell doing Jelly Roll Morton's unusual Chicago breakdown. But then Don was always known for the unusual. As a great jazz man, he sought out the unusual. And in the last of our survey of Don Ewell, taken from a 1952 recording session that he did, and he did it with an unusual idea, once again, unusual. That's, that's the word for Don Ewell. He is simply an amazingly smooth performer, always coming up with the unexpected, which is, of course, what you expect from a great jazz man. This idea for a recording, Don was going to take a bunch of King Oliver uh, recordings and do piano solos. And one of the tunes happened to be Froggy Moore, or as Jelly originally wrote it in 1918, Frog I More Rag. And so here's Don Ewell unwittingly playing another jelly tune, although he was really trying to take off on the King Oliver records of Jelly's Froggy Moore. <laughs> Thank you. 
that was the absolutely exquisite Don Ewell, jazzman extraordinaire, playing ragtime, as we're finding most of the revivalists in the 40s and 50s were jazzmen who stretched back a little further into time, musical time, and recorded and started playing rags, of course with their own inimitable style. Another such jazz man was Marvin Ash, born in Lamar, Colorado in 1914. He unfortunately died in California in 1974. He was an extraordinary guy too, a roommate of Bob Zerke, who was one of the great pianists, jazz men of all time. He very frequently had to substitute for Zerke when Zerke was, to put it euphemistically, under the weather. Marvin Ash more than held his own. He was a delightful guy who formed a jazz band on the West Coast in the late 40s, recorded when they found out that he had a repertoire of very exciting tunes they quickly asked him to record a bunch of solos. From a 1947 session, I'd like you to hear something that's very unusual because he plays Bob Zerke's Hobson Street Blues and he does it twice. Of course, two completely different
remain totally different performances of the same tune. That was Bob Zerke's Hobson Street Blues, as played for us by Marv Ash. What a phenomenal player. And he astounded everybody with the unusual repertoire that he came up with when he recorded. For instance, in 1949 for Capitol Records, when nobody really knew too much about anything concerning ragtime, out came a 1905 cannonball rag by Joseph Northup, as performed by Marv Ash. <laughs> to the cannonball. Just to show you how unusual Marv Ash is and how completely differently these jazz men are when it comes to a familiar tune. At least I hope it's a familiar tune. We heard Wally Rose with the Yerba Buena Jazz Band at the beginning of the session doing Joplin's Maple Leaf Rag. And now I'd like you to hear Marv Ash do the same number.
that's our sort of tribute to Marv Ash doing Bob Zerke's Hobson Street Blues, Joseph Northup's Cannonball Rag, and Joplin's Maple Leaf. A phenomenon of the 50s were guys, professional studio musicians, who adopted a pseudonym and performed ragtime. Real ragtime. The first one is comes from Chicago, his name, his pseudonym anyway, Pete Handy, and he's doing his bartender's rag. <laughs> At least that's what the public heard, Pete Handy, and saw. Actually, the magnificent studio pianist was, real name was Sid Nierman, and he worked out of Chicago for the NBC studios. And his album was a very interesting one, because it was filled not only with originals like Bartender's Rag, which was a very unusual rag, contemporary recording, of a contemporary rag in the 50s, but he also uncovered a bunch of old rags, such as the Percy Wainrich hit of 1911, Snow Deer Rag. And now we'll hear Sid Nierman as Pete Handy perform Snow Deer. <laughs> Thank you. 
That's the way ragtime should go. Happy music, lively music, zesty music. Indeed, this is what the pseudonymous guys in the 50s were doing. Studio men who grew up in the ragtime era, or the last part of the ragtime era, actually, when novelty rags were in bloom, so to speak. But when they did it themselves in the 50s, after having never played rags, they added a special feeling that really didn't happen when the jazz men played it, and it didn't happen when the classical boys got hold of it. This is real ragtime with the fine, proper spirit that ragtime engenders. The next pseudonymous player, his real name was Dick Hyman. But he went under a bunch of pseudonyms in the 50s. This one, he was Slugger Ryan. As we'll hear Jelly Roll Morton's The Naked Dance. <laughs> Dick Hyman, as he really is, doing his own composition, Honky Tonk Music. As Knuckles O'Toole, he created a great sensation in the mid to late 50s, and here he is doing the Henry Cohen 1915 rag, Canadian Capers. <laughs> Thank you. 
was Canadian Capers, Henry Cohen's San Francisco Rag of 1915. Actually, it wasn't. Actually, it was Sid Laprati's Rag of 1915. Sid Laprati was a Barbary Coast pianist who had a um, big piece, of which Canadian Capers was only the first part. And Tin Pan Alley Shark, Henry Cohen, would come in and give him dollar tips all the time to play the thing, and he just cribbed the first part and published it as Canadian Capers. But it's fitting that we end the program as we started with a San Francisco idea of Wally Rose with the Yerba Buena Jazz Band and the Maple Leaf Rag. That's right. Another version of the Maple Leaf Rag. This time Dick Hyman, that marvelous studio musician, jazz man extraordinaire from New York City, performing as Slugger Ryan, Scott Joplin's Maple Leaf Rag. <laughs> Thank you. 